Hi everybody, this is Rob Redman of Prior Studios. Now, in this video, it's going to be quite a quick one, uh, but we're going to take a, a look at kind of fragmenting an object and disintegrating or exploding an object without using any plugins. Uh, this seems to be a common theme at the moment, and I know a few people have done tutorials using various different tools and techniques. Um, and uh, uh, I thought I'd show you the way I would go about it. Um, I think it's quite a versatile method um, and it utilizes some of the, the MoGraph tools. Um, so that means that you can use any of the effectors um, from the particle systems as well as from MoGraph itself. Anyway, let's take a look at um, uh, an example that I'm just going to put together or have put together. So I've got this example here that I'm just going to play through. You can see that all the the, the, the polygons and all these little fragments come together um, to form a pyramid um, and as it forms I switch on the visibility of a second object which you can see the green one which appears as they all fragment again and you can see there's some scaling that goes on there the particles kind of start off tiny and then they get slightly bigger as they coalesce into this one main pyramid and at this point I switch on the second uh, and you can see there as they all fly away that's revealed just inside it's just scaled down very slightly and um, this is part of uh, uh, an ongoing project that I'm working on at the moment and it's really but more of a proof of concept than anything else and um, so this isn't really a finished product but I thought it'd be useful to show you as an example okay so you can see then they do a funky little thing and all kind of move back into the hole again uh, so let's move this out of the way and let's start a new scene in Cinema 4D. Okay, right. Um, now you can use pretty much any kind of object you want for this. Uh, any geometry at all will work for this kind of technique. Um, let's do something. Let's let's do a sphere. A sphere is reasonably easy to get going, and everybody likes playing around with spheres. Um, okay, in fact. Let's not do a sphere. I'm always doing spheres. Uh, let's use the example I showed. Let's do a uh, pyramid. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that down and make it a bit flatter. I'm also gonna turn it round. I'll do it so it's similar to the example in the video um, and it'll be upside down like so. Um, I'm gonna give it a couple of segments just to start off making some cuts and this is the important part. Um, I'm gonna hit C key just to make that an editable object. And what I'm gonna do is you can just turn this around so we can see what's going on. See, the top has these kind of square quad polygons and the side has these triangular polygons. So what I'm gonna do is go into polygon mode, hit K key, and I'm going to use the line and turn off restrict to selection and visible only. And this means that I can draw lines all the way through. Uh, it doesn't really matter where I'm drawing these. I literally just want to break up the surface of these polygons. So I'm just going to twist this around um, as I go to make a few cuts. Uh, there's completely random. I want to kind of distribute the cuts reasonably well, just so that there's no massive polygons lying around. So I'm just going to add a cut there, a cut across there, and across the corner and keep a couple that are slightly bigger but I want to avoid any of the regular ones okay so let's have a look see what we've got so I've got the nice big ones there and some smaller ones but nothing too even or square looking I think that's quite good let's just stick one across the corner there maybe one across there as well okay so that's looking pretty good and what I want to do is I want to find a way of telling let me just get my horizontal um, horizon there again okay so what I want to do is find a way of letting Cinema 4D use all of these um, separate polygons as particles and individual elements um, and what I'm going to do before I carry on is just right click and I'm going down to uh, triangulate which makes them all triangles uh, as you probably guessed. Oh, I don't want to be in knife mode for that. Uh, uh, no, no, I think what I'm going to do is actually subdivide it so all of these get just that little bit smaller. So I'm just using subdivide tool as you can see there. And if I go into four views, you can see 
In fact, if I do this in um, quick shading, you'll see that if I deselect everything, hopefully you can see this, but there are no fong issues. Everything is still completely flat and level against itself. There's been no movement. It's literally just been cut up, um, which is what we want. So, okay, uh, I'm gonna take my MoGraph menu here. I'll just pop it into the side. Uh, and I'll pop the other one just over there a second. Um, so with this pyramid selected, I'm gonna take the poly effects and I'm going to make the poly effects a child of the pyramid and what this is doing is basically poly effects doesn't do anything on its own um, but it means that you can separate out all the different options uh, all the different components of a mesh um, and this is why poly effects is a good way of doing it um, some people will use plugins uh, and other people and then you know use the plugins to make cuts based on noise but this is a really good method if you have a mesh that you need to keep looking intact for most of the time um, and other people will use the the um, cloth nerbs version of doing this and using the cloth engine with the tractors and things in fact i think i saw recently um, on a, on one of the other sites i think it might have been grayscale gorilla uh, somebody doing it that way um, and that's a really good method for certain things um, but this way you don't need to, to use any dynamics or forces um, but we'll get into that anyway so let's go back into the poly effects and see what this is actually doing for us so we're going to use full polys and segments um, I'm not going to worry about preserving the fong angle at the moment. Um, we should, probably shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Now we can start moving things around if we want to, just like this. See, now what this is doing, if I go into a view with lines, this is moving the original edges. Um, so we probably want to go to, uh, let's just. I think we'll add some fall off first. Um, I'm also going to add a random effector in here just to split all these up a little bit. In fact, if I do that beforehand, uh, let's just take this back to zero so you can actually follow what I'm doing a bit more clearly. If I go to make the poly effects select, selected um, and just add a random effector and you can see that all of those shards have now broken off. Um, I'm not gonna use any more MoGraph tools for this example. I'll just get this going and show you how it works before I kind of get too involved. Uh, and just keep it simple for you. But if you know how to use the MoGraph tools, um, any of them, um, they will apply once you've added a poly effects to uh, an object, to a mesh. All of these individual components, all, each kind of polygon that makes up that pyramid mesh um, is now treated pretty much as a clone. So anything you can do with clones, you can now do with these. So you could wrap them around a spline using a spline effector. Um, you could bounce them around and have a, you know kind of a kind of a organic gentle motion um, towards their movement using um, something like a, like a step effector or a delay effector um, with some spring on it, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so back to my example. Um, I'm going to I'll leave this. Uh, 50 centimeters for now that's the the default and I'm going to go back to my poly effects and I'm going to add some fall off and here I'm not going to use infinite which at the moment you can see is what's going on because everything is affected by it now you could use any of these options I used a linear for my particular example and let's just bring this in so I can see what I'm doing and my fall off I'm going to set to nearly a hundred just bring that back over again and if I back out I'm just gonna hide the grid uh, just hopefully this will be a bit clearer for you and you can see that as I drag that fall off across because this fall off represents the um, the poly effects so anything to the right of this arrow you see the yellow arrow there uh, if I deselect, you can see it more clearly. So we've got this yellow arrow. Um, that's anything to the right of that won't be affected by poly effects. Um, but anything to the left of it will be. And with this fall off, we've got this kind of, if I go into a top view, you can see that this is the measurement here from top to bottom. That's the measurement of our fall off distance. So we could make this tighter or longer if we wanted to soften the effect. Um, but if as I move this through, you can see as that red field 
is the start of the fall off as it gets over to the right hand side everything will now become unaffected by poly effects so you can see that now if I go into this view here if I go into my right hand view and let's say turn this on to quick shaded no you can't see that I'll, I'll leave the lines on it just makes it a bit clearer for you you can see that this is now doing what I said so everything to the right hand side of this fall off up is uh, unaffected everything to the other side is affected and you can adjust the fall off so if I take the fall off over here in the attributes manager and bring that down you can see there'll now be a really harsh line between affected and unaffected by the poly effects uh, and I can smooth that off as much as I need to about 70 percent it actually works quite well for this um, so all I did is I actually took the fall off object and added this into plus y rather than the z-axis um, let's just make sure it's all lined up reasonably well okay so in this view I want everything from top to bottom so I want it to fit over the top like that and what I did is I actually went into my random effector which I'm just going to drag underneath and in effector parameters um, I'm going to turn on rotation and I'm literally just going to put some random numbers into here just to give all these polygons just a bit of a twist um, like so. Uh, I'm going to go back to poly effects and in transform uh, I'm going to make all these zero in the scale. I don't want to move them from their initial point but I want them to be minute so that as they're affected by poly effects they're going to be tiny as you can see um, and then as they're unaffected they back to their full size um, and this just means that I've got a full polygons making a full pyramid there and as the effector comes up I just moved it by accident so sorry let's get this back you can see that if I start this above those polygons have now all disappeared and that's because they're at zero scale but as I bring them back they're all going to grow to their full size and this is using the same parameter of the fall off so they'll grow at the same time as they kind of fall into position and rotation as well so that they'll get there and they're fully built back uh, and this point here I think just looks really good there's something really quite lovely about that that kind of movement uh, let's just play through this again you can see here as they all grow they start off tiny um, and they scale themselves down or in my case in this this example they scale themselves up um, so all you have to do is to start in your scene with nothing your animation uh, you can take the poly effects which is the yellow object we've just been looking at and give it a position keyframe at the start there and let's go forward a couple of seconds uh, to 50 frames and bring this down add another keyframe there and again if you want to do other things if you want it to add uh, delay effectors or any of those other things then do that um, or you could actually add some rotation to the the actual pyramid maybe you could have that slowly spinning uh, in fact let's do that that might be quite interesting just see how it looks so I'm going to add a rotation keyframe at frame zero and then I'll go forward to frame 50 and let's increase this oh, let's just go let's go around once to 360 like so add a keyframe I'm gonna go back to my starting position which is about there I'm just gonna drop my selection um, I'm also gonna go to poly effects and I don't really need to see that anymore so I'm just going to go to basic and turn off the visibility in the editor just so it doesn't get in the way uh, and now I can press play and watch as this spins itself into place so you could also have this spinning away but just by reversing that animation you could have all those particles just kind of breaking up and then spinning off and disappearing into nothingness which would be a really good way of doing 
something like um, some kind of sci-fi transporter. That would be quite nice, seeing all the, the, the tiny particles of a person uh, all disintegrating and then spinning away. Um, and you could have them, you could use a, a helix and have them all kind of spinning off around a helix. So there's some control there. There's an element of something happening which is kind of prescribed, but um, with a, a bit of randomization as well. Anyway, it's just a, a, a quick idea. So quick tutorial uh, just on a, another method of disintegrating things. Um, it's a, a long time favorite. Everybody likes blowing things up and destroying things. And so that's my take on it. And that's how I would approach things. Um, so leave a comment if you found this video useful. And if you do a, an animation um, using this kind of a technique, I'd love to see what you come up with. So do post it below. And uh, I'll see you all again in a future video. Thanks very much. I've been Rob Redman. Bye-bye.